Now in today's video, we are in the south of France again. Yes, we have visited the French country a lot before. Yes, today we are at the Mediterranean Sea again. Now today we're visiting Saint-Tropez Airport, also called La Molle. La, la mole, I don't know how to properly pronounce it. Actually, today my editor is editing this video and he is French. He's probably going to be triggered, but that does not matter to me, right? Now, as you know, there are a lot of rich people living in Saint-Tropez. And this is the airport that the rich people that live here fly to with their private jets. As you can see, we have several private jets, but as you can see, these are only smaller ones. I think this is a Cessna Citation Mustang, for example. Here's another Mustang. Here's a smaller Gulfstream. I think this is a Gulfstream at least. I'm actually not that good with private jets, but I think this is another Gulfstream here again. Now, these are only up to like 10-seater aircraft, and that is because of this runway. This runway is not long enough for a bigger aircraft, but you know what this YouTube channel is about. You know, in this case, I would ask, or is it? What plane is able to fit on this runway or to use that runway properly to take off or land? Let's find that out in today's video. This is a very high quality add-on scenery as you can see. There's even a bit of a NetJets sponsor built into this airport I can see. Yeah, I can imagine that NetJets operates a lot at this airport. Now let's start off with a jet even. This is the Cirrus Vision Jet. Now yes, this is one of the lightest jets out there, but it does still need quite a long runway. Actually, even at this runway, some pilots would already start calculating and starting to doubt a bit. Let's see. 100 knots. I think we're good to go. And yes, we were. We are now in the air. We're successfully flying. Now, obviously, that was not that much of an issue. Again, this is more of a light aircraft, but it still needed quite a bit of the whole runway, didn't it? So yeah, I'm kind of excited to see bigger planes operate here as well. This is the Bombardier Challenger 300. Now I think that plane is still kind of able to operate here, technically, I guess. Even though this is definitely on the bigger side. Even though this is definitely on the bigger side of aircraft that can fly here. You know, we're not gonna find out unless we try, right? Now, yes, this runway is 1,100 meters long or somewhat 3,000 feet. We have spawned into a mountain that is not good. Oh, Jesus Christ. That didn't quite work out. Uh, actually, I believe that the Challenger 300 on paper needs a 4,000 feet runway to operate. So this one is slightly too short, or is it? Let's see. Yeah, numbers on papers are not everything. Yeah, the approach is actually challenging as well. Obviously, you are between pretty tall mountains, right? Yeah, we almost crashed into that hill here. Now, I uh, previously said that I was not planning on floating that much. Uh, that was quite a float, whatever. That was actually quite a smooth landing, and we stopped as well. This airport is actually not that impossible. Not as bad as I thought. Talking about not bad as I thought, this landing was actually quite acceptable, wasn't it? Okay, yeah. Could have been better, but yeah. Okay, this worked out quite well. I think we can already move on to some airliners here, right? Let's try the CRJ-200. Now, you wouldn't see a plane like the CRJ-200 operate at this airport normally, obviously. But as we are at Swiss Soldier 1, we're gonna try it anyways. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. Okay, that was successful though, wasn't it? We were able to take off quite well. I mean, that was very, very close, but we are still alive. Yeah, that was not a very comfortable takeoff though, definitely. Now, I think we can move on already to an actual, actual airliner. How about the 737? Yeah, maybe Reiner could use this airport. You know, it must be a little bit cheaper than Nice, which is nearby. And you know, Reiner always wants to save, so maybe they can save some money by switching to this airport. Let's see if it's technically possible at least. Alright. That was okay, though. That was quite a good touchdown, wasn't it? And once again, we were able to normally land a 737 here. So yes, maybe the 737 could be used at this airport quite well. Even though I don't think that Ryanair passengers are really that welcome at this uh, executive airport. 
Yeah, it was a bit of a Reiner one, but it was fine. We stopped, and that's kind of all that counts. Let's crash into this Gulf Stream, am I right? What plane should we use next? How about the 767? Let's try taking that one off. The 767 is definitely a lot bigger than the 737, but it's not the biggest plane either, so this can be interesting. Now, welcome aboard the 767. Let's just try taking this one off. Uh, this is going to be very, very close, I can say. Maybe we can make it. Now, these are some quite powerful engines maybe we will have luck okay that was quite a vertical takeoff but that was pretty good wasn't it actually that was actually all right we didn't have a lot of runway left but it was enough and that was almost a tail strike as well but that's another story as well now let's land a triple seven here as well now this is not a very wide runway either oh no oh hard one <laughs> Well, that was a crash as well. Now, that is a first-timer. We landed so hard that we crashed. Yeah, we literally stalled onto the... Oh, Jesus Christ. We literally stalled onto the runway. That does not seem good. Okay, one more time. Maybe without pretty much crashing onto the runway. Okay, good landing. That was fine. Now we only need to stop, and that is where the real challenge begins, I think. Just hear the sound. This is how powerful these GE90 engines are, and... Oh, Jesus Christ. This was not very successful, right? We might have not been able to stop. I mean, the plane is still kind of alive. Yeah, this plane is definitely just too big for this small airport. And that was a really hard landing again. <laughs> Probably broke the landing gear. But yeah, as we overran right into the forest, I don't think that hard landing matters anyway. Now for the kicks and giggles, let's try a plane like the 747. But yes, we saw the 777 is kind of the biggest plane that can probably not operate. At least the 767 works fine here, right? Okay, let's see. That is looking genuinely good. That is looking quite good. Oh. Okay, uh, you know, the 747 is, uh, a great bush plane as well. We can probably still rotate soon. Yeah, that maybe was a slight overrun. Just a little bit. But that does not matter. So I don't think it makes sense to operate an A380 here. So, yeah, guys. Thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.